One, two, three. Yeah, I'm assuming he clapped. There is a site called Hearthstone Top Decks that's right here. And if you look at a specific card, every card has a rating that has been given from the community of Hearthstone. I am going to be asking Twitch chat to pick cards for us to guess what the rating will be. And then whoever is closest gets the points. First one to what? 15? 10? I don't think this is going to take that long per card. So sure. Is that too much? Sure, I don't no. know. I don't think this is going to take I don't that know, long. But I mean, the more we spend time doing this, the less time I actually have to like play Hearthstone. You're so, so right. You're so right. <laughs> I, I guess now is probably a good time to disclose that uh, I used to be a writer for Hearthstone Top Decks and I probably still have author access. So Wait. I'm just going to go in and change the score. Wait, if what the hell? Wait, you're the what? The, dude, I thought we agreed that you have to be honest with me when I ask you to do videos and this is what you do to me. <laughs> All right, chat, give me a card. Cutlass Courier. What? I don't, that's not a card. I don't. Three mana two five for rogue. After your hero attacks, draw a pirate and it's undead and it's a pirate. I believe at the time it was only a pirate. So the undead's kind of irrelevant. Most of the ratings are going to be given before the card even comes out. This card actually has a good body for a three drop. And I think a lot of people would assume that you can go like turn to dagger into weapon. Now, I'm not too optimistic on this card, though. What do you think? I don't know. Like this card was uh, incredibly strong in wild for quite a while. So it depends on like what Ooh. portion of the audience is rating based off of it. I'm glad that you hit on like the fact that the ratings are heavily skewed towards pre-release, right? Like yes, a yes. lot of the times when people are actually visiting the site is or looking at the cards and then therefore rating them is as they get announced in my opinion i don't think it's gonna be very high but i'm curious to see what you go for uh you want to do like on the count of three i guess Anyone why don't we go whoever's chat picks the card rates first i like that idea i like the idea i'm gonna go with like a 3.1 okay yeah that's pretty close to what i was thinking i was thinking like a three five three um, five okay yeah so i'm going three five all right i will let you know what it is hold on it has a 4.5 what i told you <laughs> That's that's a lot higher than I thought. And I think if anything, like <laughs> the fact that it's, it's so funny, the very first comment says, why is this rated so highly? Does it make sense to me to get a 4.6 <laughs> out of five, which is hilarious? I be, I guess people just saw this as like a pretty good card in a vacuum, right? Which makes sense. It, it does look as a, a pretty good three drop. Yeah, uh, 4.5 is crazy, though. That's OK. Let your chat pick a card. I, I uh, tallied you up. Chat, pick a card. Oh any God. card the okay, first one i saw is carnivorous cube that's actually that's a spicy one okay five minute four six I neutral don't know how to spell i just typed carn all right carnivorous cube five minute four six neutral uh battle cry destroy a friendly minion that death rattle summon two copies of it okay so we we do know from like hindsight that this card mm -hmm. ended up being very strong it worked really well in warlock i'm not really sure what other decks really wanted to run it but in warlock it was very good that being said, we didn't really know how good this was going to be going into this expansion because we have to remember what the exp the expansion was before this, which was Knights of the Frozen Throne. There is potential that people would rate this a little bit lower. I'm curious to hear what you think of this card. No, I think that's a, a good look. I think that there, there are two things that are making me like lean towards probably overrating this compared to what people actually rated it at the time. First of all, like the broad Hearthstone community loves just like big value things that's like true this. this is the first time we got this type of effect and i think people were a little bit surprised by how effective it was like we're just coming out of a druid stone from knights of the frozen throne so yeah. i think people see kill your own minion and probably don't see a lot of upside associated with that this is a tough one for sure um, oh i don't know man this is there's so much to consider i wish we did Venari first but yeah obviously okay what do you want to review for? All right, what do you want to guess? I'm going to go pretty low on this one. I think I'm going to go like 2.5. And I think a lot of that is skewed after the fact. I think it was probably probably rated lower initially. And Ooh. then like eventually got a bit of a bump after people started playing it. So I'm going 2.5. Okay, so you do you actually think that there's a, is a significant amount of people who go check the ratings after and like change it? No, no, okay. no. But I think that there's enough to bump it up a little bit more. 2.5. I kind of agree with your sentiment there. I'm going to go with like, I think maybe people probably thought it was going to be a little better. I'll go with like, maybe, uh, maybe like a 2.9. It has a 4.4. <laughs> that is unhinged. <laughs> yes. Okay. So what are we learning here? 
is like people tend to overvalue cards, right? It, 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 don't get me wrong. It ended up being very good. Man, I got to go back and see what, what people um, rated it during that time, like streamers and stuff. Right. I know this will never be viable and or good, but imagining the meme that this is using this on anomalous. Oh my God, he's cooked. People really Wait, an anomalous yet. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, I didn't think this didn't... was gonna be that high. Okay, well, I ended up getting closer, so that's the least. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's do patches. That's actually a really good one. And okay, so let's let's remember, by the way, that this is patches with charge, not just right. a one minute one one boy. So patches the pirate right. one minute one one neutral legendary. Uh, it said charge after you play a pirate, summon this minion from your deck, and at the time it was only a pirate. I wish I remembered what content. I, I feel like people really undervalued how good patches was gonna be. I still, to this day, despite all of the historical data and knowledge we have, people still question why patches is a good card. Yes, yes. But rating a card like this that we've never seen truly in the game before is really difficult. And people probably saw this as a one minute one one charge pirate. Right, people didn't consider pulling it from your deck, getting an extra one one, drawing a card. Like, there's so many things that makes patches the pirate so powerful nowadays that we see in hindsight. This is very clearly and very obviously one of the strongest cards in the history of Hearthstone and remains such. Yes, like, yes. Uh, there's there's no way that people missed on this card, right? Especially really? when it had charge. Like, I think people people were just putting <laughs> Saucy Captain in every deck in every class just so that they could pull patches from their deck. No, but that, that is, people is. decided to do that post patches, right? Like, yeah. I, I don't think people really expected this to be as good as it was before it came out. Um, well, what, I, do you what do you think is the rating? I'm assuming this is going to be like a three. I'm going oh. for, I'm going for broke. I'm going to 4.5. 4.5. Okay, let me, yes. oh my God, I can't wait to read this. Holy if shit. this is rated lower than Carnivorous Cube, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> okay, I'm pulling this up. And it's a 3.6. Yeah. All right, I won that shit. Right. Let's go. Big. That's unbelievable. Big, big. Okay, I've just lost completely lost all respect for the Hearthstone <laughs> community. Never mind. I'm just let me let me read the, some of the uh, the comments here. This guy should be played in a non pirate deck. Oh my god, he was cooking. Worth crafting? I don't think so. Yet, if you get this from a booster, it should be an auto included any pirate deck. Interesting. Oh no. <laughs> Oh man! So the, I think what we can all learn from this is that nobody actually knows what they're nobody talking knows about anything. Yeah, pre -release. for sure, for sure. Holy shit! I mean, to be fair, right? I I, I think almost majority of people didn't think as, as it would be as good as we thought it, or it ended up being. So I, I, I'm I sorry, but I think that anybody that has ever played a card game before in their <laughs> life can look at Patches the Pirate and say that's busted. All right, what's the next card? Uh, let's go Confessor Paletress for now. She changed, I think, right? Okay, yeah. So She changed very recently. She was, instead of having Battle Cry, she was only Inspire, correct? I think that's what the actual yes. line was. So it, it was a 7 mana 5 for Inspire, summon a random legendary minion. People who don't know Inspire is, it's just using your hero power. So uh, people love this card. That's the thing, right? And uh, random legendaries get people's mind very excited. Their goblin brain goes like absolutely apeshit for cards like this. Metagame 2 before this was... Flame Waker, Grim Patron. So honestly, I can't expect this card to be higher than like a two. The fact that I think Priest is bad makes me think that this is lower than it should have been. But honestly, was this card even good? I don't know. What do you think this is gonna be? All right, I'm up first. I'm going like 175. I'm gonna go a little higher. I'm gonna go 2.5 just because I do think people get really excited about this. I don't know how many reviews there will be. All right. It has a four out of five. Uh, I'm gonna retire from. Dude, this out. is. So <laughs> I'm sorry, but if uh, if Confessor Paltris is getting a rating that high, um, does that have no. more than patches? <laughs> the community doesn't deserve videos on a daily basis. Sorry, I'm done. Crazy. Consider this my two weeks' notice, Rarin. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is. <laughs> yeah. This, this card... is my breaking point. Let me read some <laughs> this of the comments. This is my for Joker you. moment. <laughs> <laughs> Chat. Next card. Ultimate Infestation. I think is a really good one. Okay. 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 That is a good choice. That's yeah. Like, obviously, if you played during that time, you know what this is. 10 mana druid spell, ultimate infestation, deal five damage, draw five cards, gain five armor, summon a five, five ghoul. This card ended up being one of the main reasons why druid was so good because it gave you so much from one card. It allowed you to get to more of your, your, your better cards in druid, like the, the death knights, but it's 10 mana. And I think people realized at this point that 10 mana is really bad. Uh, they usually have to do something insane. So I don't know if people really recognize this card to be that good. Obviously, 
this card ended up being very strong. Well, counterpoint, uh, 10 mana in Druid is very different than 10 mana in every other class in Hearthstone. So, You're very right. You're very right. Um, people are hyper, hyper concerned about overdrawing cards or like, especially casual players, uh, overdrawing cards and getting to fatigue faster. So I think the the card draw, while actually being the best part of the card, <laughs> is maybe the part that uh, before release people are the most concerned about, right? Uh, there's the uh, ultimatum card in Magic the Gathering that a lot of people compared it to, where it's just like a bunch of mana and a bunch of text, where it does a, a whole bunch of different things. It's interesting that you say like, you thought, you thought the average person thought like card draw was the worst part, right? So then do you think people really rated this high if they thought like five damage, gain five armor, seven to five, five ghoul is that good? I think it's going to be like a very polarizing card. So that might bring the average Ooh. somewhere in the middle just because there's going to be a lot of like casual card game players. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's really interesting. I, I'm I'm gonna, I, it, this is my card, right? So I'm gonna take a, a little bit of like a, a wild approach here. I'm gonna assume people thought this was gonna be really good. I'm gonna guess like 4.3. I think that's where I was leaning for my guess. So, and so the question, yeah, the question is, is it gonna be higher or lower? Um, I'm gonna go 3.75. Chat thinks this is gonna be very highly rated. I think it probably is too. 4.6. Yeah. Four points. It, it felt risky going above a 4.3. Yeah, it's tough. But... That is definitely tough. All right, your turn. Yeah, I'm trying to decide between which ones. Uh, Rattle Gore is the one that came through the first. Rattle so Gore. Rattle Gore. <laughs> okay. Nine mana, nine, nine. Undead. I don't believe it was undead at the time. Death Rattle resummon this with minus one, minus one. This is a warrior legendary trap. Probably one of the most unique facts at the time during Skullman's Academy really stood out as a really cool card. Uh, people really have an affinity towards this. I think a lot of people would agree with me that at first glance, this looks very slow, but it's yes. such a cool card. Did it see play? It ended up seeing play at some point for sure. Because there was like Big Warrior. It always has and probably will see some amount of fringe play just because of, like you said, it's a unique, cool effect. It also depends a little bit. Like Warrior is historically one of the most Feast or Famine or, or classes in Hearthstone. Either it's really good or it's really terrible. And either way, people are really unhappy about it. So <laughs> like the like Warrior's status in the metagame at the time is something that probably shaped the ratings for Rattlegore as well. What, what what do you rate this card? I'm going with a, a skewed rating as a result of seeing Confessor Paltris. I think that the community rates things based on just pure vibes and the Rattlegore <laughs> vibes are absolutely immaculate. Yeah, it's, it's so I'm gonna odd. go with a I'm gonna go with a 4.0 on, 4 uh, on Rattlegore. Yes. My opinion, like we just saw how aggro the game became because of Demon Hunter. So I'm gonna go a little lower. I'm gonna go like 3.4. 3.1. Oh. Oh my God, I'm, I'm getting hooked right now. This is <laughs> unreal. Kidding. Nobody has been more out of touch with the Hearthstone community <laughs> than me right now. Rexar Lich King hero card. Okay, so Deathstalker Rexar. Oh my God, this one's gonna be really tough actually because people love this fucking card. Battle Cry, deal two damage to all enemy minions and you also gain five armor and the hero power, which is the most important thing here is two mana. Craft the custom zombies, which is basically picking two beasts and putting them together. I think this card was rated very high. I'm sure a ton of people thought the process of like, you put this in a face hunter deck, you play this at six mana, and then you have a way for the late game assurance. That's where I'm going with this. So I actually think this is also people love this effect. So I think this is rated very highly. And then the reality was, is that on release, at least it was not good it like on release death stalker rexar was pretty bad it became a good card eventually just because of shifting matchups and like different needs for the um for the class that said i think you're probably still right that people are going to rate this pretty highly just because it's a unique effect like every every initial thought i feel like i need to go george costanza mode here and just do the opposite <laughs> of what my initial instinct is because that seems because my initial instinct seems to be just wrong okay well i'm gonna remind you of something so when Malfury and the Pestilent was introduced, the Death Knight for Druid. People thought it wasn't going to be very good because it right. wasn't very flashy, right? It was a very like whatever effect. Honestly, that ended up being like this, the best one, second best one, maybe. People really overvalue really spicy effects. And this is probably one of the spicy effects, if not the most spicy we've seen so far. I'm giving it like a 4.8. Okay, well, I mean, I have no choice but to go lower. I'm going to go like, I'm going to go 4.4. Let's see what we got. 3.9? What? Man, that's crazy, dude. Yeah, that's 
That's why I thought for sure people would have wanted that more. Okay, okay. Zero out of 100, play Savannah Hyvain instead. <laughs> All right, your turn. Let's go Lakari Sacrifice. Did they, they didn't change this That's card what in, is. in the buffs, right? I don't think they did. I think they left it alone. There's no, there is no possible way that you could buff this card to make it useful or relevant in any way. You're right. Lakari Sacrifice, one of the quests from Angoro for Warlock. Starts in your hand. The quest is to discard six cards and the reward is the Nether Portal, which is a permanent on your board for five mana that summons three, two imps at the end of your turn, I believe. This one's weird because I do think people actually thought this was going to be good because the the yeah. concept of infinite three twos for five mana is nuts, right? That is that is insane. But obviously it turned out that this card is miserable because it's so hard not only to discard your hand, but to actually get to the point where playing this is actually going to win you the game. I think people over analyze this card and really thought to themselves that surely this will see play. What do you think? No, no, I think you're absolutely right. It's the exact card that gets overrated in pre-release because like this is at a time when this type of infinite value engine was non-existent. So it, it, this does have the potential to be fairly polarizing as well because like, I don't think anybody's gonna rate it somewhere in the middle, right? They're going to rate it like either a one or a five. And it's a matter of how, whether there's more people rating at a one or more people rating at a five. I, I, I am really leading towards this card is like highly rated. I'm really leading towards it. I think it's a 2.5. 2.5? Yeah. Really? I, I'm yeah. going to be honest here. I think that's really low. I'm going for at least a 3.8. I'm going for 3.8. Like I think that's three, three. eight. Yeah. Cause uh, okay. I think the value here is really relevant to how powerful this card was. Okay. Let me see what it is. 3.8, let's go! <laughs> right on the money. Huge. I can't wait to read the review. Absolutely this. psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, chat, next card. Dragon Caller Alana. Nine mana, three, three, mage legendary. Battlecry summon a five, five dragon for each spell you've cast this game that cost five or more. It's a pretty cool card. Like that's a big finisher people like when you can build towards a win condition and see it in action. So I would imagine that people thought this card was going to be good. But honestly, okay, what was before this? We had Frostless Jaina before this. For the same cost, why am I running this card when I can run Frostless Jaina? Also, I believe at this time Highlander Mage was like very considered playable. Um, I think you make good points and like the card was actually was okay. Decent. I think from a player perspective, like people love big effects. This was a really cool idea, cool concept. Um, there was a lot of work and build for it that you could do. I, I, I honestly, I, if it's kind of, maybe people thought that it would fit into the Jaina deck and the Jaina deck was good, I believe during Knights of the Frozen Throne, right? I mean, Druid was the, the deck to play during Frozen Throne, but I think Frostless Jaina was a really good card. Oh man, I don't know. It's such a flashy effect, but do people really think? I'm gonna go with like a 3.3. I think I'm gonna go a little bit below at 3.0. Just three 3 on the note. Okay, no, I think that's fair. I think that's very fair. 3.8. 3.8. 3 I mean, that's actually probably one of the more accurate ratings that a card has been given. Uh, okay, so this one this one is a newer card, but I wanted to do it because I think it'll be funny. Okay. Uh, Bounce Around featuring Garona. Oh, this one's very interesting. Bounce around featuring Garona. Can we just take a moment and say, I hate the way that they named this card? Yes, it, <laughs> like I understand what they're trying to do, but it just makes me hate the card more than <laughs> I... Three mana legendary spell for Festival of Legends for Rogue. Return all friendly minions to your hand. They cost one this turn. I'm going to be honest. I thought this card was going to be good. I'm going to be honest. I think the entire Hearthstone community thought it was going to be good yes. because they were like furious about Shadow Step at the car at the time. Yes. And yes. instead of actually reading the text and the numbers on the card, we're just letting their rage towards Shadow Step dictate their ratings of this card. And yes. it's going to be probably one of the most overrated cards in the history of all. You're of so you are so right. You like, are so right. Like people could see envision a combo with a card like this. And I feel like it was generally like really well received. Like you said, I'm going to no, 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 no. Let's be clear. It was not well received. People were furious right, that this card right. was being printed and you're right, you're like right. yeah, yeah. calling for preemptive nerfs for yeah. this card that never saw play. I'm going 4.6. 4.6. And I think that might be a little bit low. And if it is low, it's because of after the fact votes. Like, I think that people oh. were absolutely losing their mind over this card. 4.6 is tough because you might be right. I'm not going to be cringe to and be, pick like 4.5. I think that's ridiculous. I'll go like 4.1. I think higher is a little risky for me. 4.1, okay. 4.6. 4.6, Raffle. It didn't matter what On I the did. dot? On the dot. It didn't matter what I did. Okay, yeah. First comment says, Rogue will be tier one again in the next expansion. 
<laughs> okay. Oh my god, that was a good that was a good card. All right, chat, next card. Zul Jin. Ooh, this one's actually a really good choice because this is like the only hero card from this set, right? So yes. it was pretty unique. Yes. So Zuljin, uh, 10 mana for Battlecry, casts all spells you've played this game, target chosen randomly for Hunter, and you got five armor, and his hero power became two mana, deal two damage. Did people think Rostikon's Rumble was gonna be very weak even before the card the set came out? I think they did, right? I think a lot of people were like, what is the set? I think a lot of people were confused even going in, and then it lived up to their low expectations. Yeah, I remember there was a card in Hunter called, I don't remember what it is, but it was like two mana, resummon all your beasts that died this turn, and people thought that was gonna be broken. E this card looks good, but comparatively to what we saw currently in the metagame, I'm not sure if this card actually was really hyped up considering what when this card, not only when this expansion was released, but how weak this expansion actually looks. Oh my God, this one's tough. I think this card would have been rated very highly because it's very, it just was one of the coolest cards by far. If Deathstalker Rexar was rated that low, do people, did people really think that Zuljin was going to be a more powerful effect than this? I don't but know. they may have learned their lesson about hero cards. You're also point. right. Yeah, there's a little bit of like, see, it's tough because you're, you're I try to metagame the system a little bit more as we get more and more cards. But I don't know if that's actually the case. I want to be wrong about this card, but I'm going to give it like a 3.8. I think I think a 4.3 okay. is where I'm going to go with it. 4.3 are awful. Holy shit. The comeback. Is Wait, really on the like, dot again? On the dot again. Yeah. OK, I'm starting to I'm starting to get into the mind of a Hearthstone top deck <laughs> right now. One of the comments is more hateful than Yogg, more annoying than Shutterlock. <laughs> we'll go Galakrond the Nightmare. That's the rogue one. Galakrond the Nightmare. Seven mana for rogue. Battlecry draw one card. It costs zero. You get five armor. If you invoke twice, you get draw two cards. They cost zero. And then if you do it four times, you get draw four cards, they cost zero, and you get a 5-2 weapon. Also really important for the hero power here, which is add a lackey to your hand. It's also important to note all of the invoke cards that Rogue ended up getting. One mana, give a minion plus one attack, and invoke Galakron. They got three mana, deal three damage to an undamaged minion. Kronk was also there. Uh, which is important. So I think people really thought that Galakron was going to be good. Lackeys were already great. Like that's a huge aspect of this as well for the Galakron one specifically, but a card that costs zero in Rogue, people are like always scared about, right? I could point though. Okay, go for it. I think people thought the hero power is going to just be atrocious. And I think that might have skewed people's ratings. I have no idea how people thought about Galakon in hindsight. Drawing plus making them cost zero is really great. People really like the concept of just doing a really big wombo combo with Rogue. Togwaggle was already in the game, which is important. So That's I would true. imagine people would think that Galakon the Nightmare was going to be good. Yeah, I think you're you're starting to change my mind a little bit because I was initially going to go rating this a little bit lower. I think that um, mm. this one's really tough. Undoubtedly, it was a good card, right? Yes, like it yes, made, yes. It made for an archetype and a big portion of it was because of the- uh, You build around this. Like the, you building around this card, right? I think this yeah. card is really difficult to evaluate, but you're going- I think it is too. And I, I have to go first is the- Yeah, I think- <laughs> I'm gonna go 3.3. I'll go for like 3.7. 4.6. 4.6? In some regards, they were right, but like that's still very high. All right, Tour Guide. That's a great card for this. Tour Guide, one mana, one, one neutral. Common. Battle Cry, your next hero power costs zero. I don't know if this card would still see play nowadays, but it wasn't a very like interesting effect, which makes me think that it, people thought it was going to be worse. It's basically like if you consider it even just a Warlock card, it's basically Cobalt Librarian. Cobalt Librarian is one of the strongest cards in the history of Hearthstone. So you're right. I think that that might like it, if you're just considering it in Warlock, which is, you know, where it's frequently played, um, that kind of skews it. I think my perspective is maybe a little bit uh, skewed just because of its prevalence in Wild. Hmm. Which I think is tough. But it's tough, yeah. Is this when they were just like dumping neutral cards at the end of a set too? Yes. Like yes. So yes. like it, it could be hidden amongst the the neutral cards. Yeah. Like they. You gotta also remember this is Skullmets Academy, so we're we're thinking about cards like Janus Bear Off, right, or Lord Bear Off, like uh, Minor Under Lucia, like all these really really impactful cards in this set because this this is one of the most powerful sets we've seen so far. At that time, especially neutrals were not considered very good. That in mind. I will give this like a 2.9. Once again, you went right about where I was going to go. So I need to decide whether I want to go above or below. I'm going to go 2.4. 2.4. I think I'm going okay. a little bit below. 4.0. Really? 
They're not wrong though. I, I like wrong. from my yeah. perspective, this is a 4.0 card. I, like I think that's like on the nose. It's, so I, they're just better I, than I, us. I, I think we just suck I, at reviewing cards. Like it, yeah, that's that's how we missed you know absolute bangers like Lakari Sacrifice and Kim Fesser Paltris when they were first yes. released. Yes. I think we have ratings for this card, but uh, Barnes. Okay. Oh, God, Barnes. Barnes used to be four mana. So four yes. mana, three, four, battle cry, summon a one, one copy of a random minion in your deck. This is a legendary, obviously, and it's neutral. I can't remember when they revealed this in one night in Karazhan, but we we know in hindsight that this card was very impactful. In fact, I just did a, I, I'm going to release my top 100 card video of all time very soon. And I think I put this mm -hmm. in like 43, 42. I think it does get overrated just because of the visceral reaction that people yes. have to it. I don't think this card saw a lot of play initially, right? It really started uh, to pick up steam when more like big beefy threats. Like was Karazhan before or after Old Gods? It was after. I looked at the 2017 World Championship decklist and Barnes was the third most played legendary during that set. Okay. People thought that I'm assuming like Savannah High Main was the bigger one. There's also, um, and Hunter, oddly, it was played like uh, quite a bit for other reasons. There's also right, like the fact that you could just Oli. hit Rag, like that was the bigger yeah. one. So there was a bunch of reasons for that. Also, this is neutral. Also, the Yashirash combo, right? Right. So the, the Spell Hunter plus this and Yashira was like a terror for a while, even before Big Priest became a thing. I mean, interpret this card in a lot of different ways, right? Might, people might think this is really bad. Is it really worth building a deck around this? But obviously, we know in hindsight that it was just put into a lot of just decks because if you did high roll, you just win the game. You're saying a lot of words there, but hold on. I like, are you are you seeing his fingers? Like, what's going on there? Did AI make this card? <laughs> like, Come on, like, man. This is, I, I can't think about anything other than that right now. I mean, he's holding five fingers. If you think about it, you should just give him five out of five. Yeah, but two of them are standing out pretty, okay, fair pretty enough. clearly. Fair enough. Okay, so so three I think what that means... <laughs> Is I'm going 4.2. Before I give my my review here, I just want to say that I do think that people, when they reviewed this card, thought it was going to be really good. Actually, I think I will go higher on this. I think that's like a 4.5. Was Karazhan like a really powerful set? Like, I guess it kind of was. It had, it was a small set, but it had some like pretty, pretty big outliers, right? It had, not in the legendaries necessarily, other than Barnes. Um, what'd you say? 4.1? I said 4.2. 4.8. It's 4.1. Oh! See those two fingers. They, they were. I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but they were tipping me off to something. This card is too random. People, when they don't understand that they can build their own decks. Let's do Kingsbane. I'm gonna one three Kingsbane weapon for Rogue. Always keeps enchantments, which means if you add a deadly poison, it keeps it. Death battle shuffle this into your deck. So not only was this a one minute one three weapon, which is pretty good for a weapon, it had only benefits. I mean, this card, I believe people were really excited for amongst all the other like weapons. I feel like this one was the most hyped. What other weapons is it being compared to, right? I think this is a very flashy effect and comparatively to every other weapon released for every class, the legend, this is like the legendary weapon set. I think this one was like, like, holy shit. Like this actually looks like nuts. I don't fucking know. This is crazy. Probably like a 4.6. I'm going to go higher. <laughs> really I'm going to go 4.8. 4.4. That's, I mean, gamble did not pay off. It's tough. This feels like the appropriate response to a Kingsbane. Cobalt Sticky Finger. Five and a four, four. Cobalt Sticky Finger. Battlecry Steel. Your opponent's weapon. It's a pirate's. I really don't think people were considering this card to be that good because we already had ooze, right? So, like, why would people want to run this when you could just run ooze? I, oh, Rarin, my I, sweet summer child. Wait, wait, what are you yeah. going to, what, what are you thinking? <laughs> you think it's broken? What? I think people thought it was going to be broken. Because, no way! Because destroying your opponent's weapon is one thing, but in the minds of a casual, dealing it is just like <laughs> infinitely, infinitely more satisfying. It doesn't matter what the weapon is. In a very recent metagame, this card had a higher play rate than Kingsbane Rogue in order to counter Kingsbane Rogue in, in oh the Oh my god. Format. They don't they don't care about winning games so much as doing something mean to their opponent. And Cobalt Sticky Finger stealing a weapon is very mean. I think it's like a 3.8. 3.8? There's no way. There's no Absolutely. way. Yeah, I've I'm never gonna, been more confident in my I'm going to disagree with you here. I, I'm giving like a 2.5. Like, I, I think people saw this and saw potential, but I don't I don't think it's that high. That's this, that's that's we, we okay. saw fucking Galacron at 4.1. There's no way that this, this is that high. This is my wild. perception of reality. 4.0? No way. <laughs> what? what did I tell you? I'm, I'm, I'm locked in right now. We are so bad. There's no way that is... Dude, what the fuck? This card was rated higher than Deathstalker Rexart. All right, let's do Shadow Rager. I can't believe that was a four. That's 
insane to me. All right. <laughs> Three mana, five one with stealth was not in a debt at the time. So it's irrelevant for Rogue. Very simple to the point. I think this card was probably reviewed pretty poorly though, right? Um, yeah, I think so. It was, I mean, it had stealth, so it had to be at least like a little interesting because I guarantee some people thought about the combos of it, but there's no way this is higher than like a two. There's no way it's higher than a two. I don't think we really have to discuss this. Like, I mean, we, we know like the joke, so I'm going to go with like 1.3. I'm tempted to go lower just because of the meme. The type of person to leave a rating on a Hearthstone top decks card is not the type of person to like laugh at the joke i think that they're more just going to get <laughs> angry about it so i think it's going to be like a i think it's a 0.9 <laughs> you should 2. be 2.8 2 <laughs> okay well i i'm just i i thought i was locked in it's so over. what the fuck <laughs> right. there's there is no way people saw this card and went haha this is actually going to be playable i mean it's a three mana mind blast raran yeah but oh my god <laughs> Oh, all right. What's your next card? Prince Taldoram. Three mana, three, three neutral. Battle cry. If your deck has no three cost cards, transform into a three, three copy of a minion. It was not undead at the time. Uh, Frozen Throne as well. I actually have no idea how good people thought this card was going to be because the card of his cube was not introduced until the next set. Right. And three drops, if I remember correctly, were pretty decent. You have to consider, I think there is a world where like Prince Keliseth even was vastly vastly underestimated because people didn't want to like have a gap in their curve this is I tough think so. this is tough i think it's probably under two but like i also don't like have we had anything under two like if, if shadow rager was over a two it's like got to be impossible for a card to be below two right well it's see it's tough because it might like that one's different because there's a meme associated with it right i'm gonna go 2.2 i don't know if this is the case but i do think people might have overestimated this card because we've okay. never really seen an effect like this and i do think this is a flash enough effect where people would be like oh it's losing three cost cards isn't that big of a deal we had faceless manipulator and that was a good card so if anything that could be skewing people hmm. in the long yeah i'm gonna go i'll go with like a 3.4 it, when you have like a unique effect like that i think that's 1.8 oh, wait what it's 1.8 that's what it got wait this, so this was rated lower than Shadow Rager. Dude, this is... Yeah. It's... <laughs> All right, let's do Shrivala. All right, Shrivala the Tiger. 7-5 Beast for Paladin. Divine Shield, Rush, Lifesteal, cost one less for each mana you spent on spells. I literally can't remember how people evaluated this. I do remember that OTK Paladin was really good during like Rise of Shadows onwards. I legitimately think this card was probably received very well. It just seems like a pretty good card. I think people see a number like 25 and freak out. I don't know. This one, this one is a good choice from your chat, but I'm angry about it because I don't know how to rate it. So. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's so tough because it is a very flashy card. Like it's cool. Because I, I got to rate it first, I'm gonna go with like, I don't know, 3.1. It might be lower. Okay. It's tough. It's yeah. so tough. I don't think there's a world where it could possibly be higher than that. So it's a matter of how close. I think I want to go 2.8. 3.5. I was wrong. It's true. Oh, right. Interesting. Oh my God. That's what That one's so tough. Just imagine having a 10 cost Shrivala, then playing an 8 cost. That would make it cost 2. And let's not forget 7 healing. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> Counting in my children's card game? No. <laughs> this is actually a good one. The cavern's below. Play four minions with the same name, reward the crystal core, and the crystal core is for the rest of the game. Your minions are five, five for five mana. You know what's weird is I think people thought that Lakari Sacrifice was going to be better than this. 100%. I remember vividly. This is this was like one of my black pill moments within Hearthstone, and especially reading the Hearthstone subreddit. There were numerous threads about this card and how furious people were going into the expansion. Black Not because they were so concerned bad. it was going to be too good, but they were they were simply mad or because Rogue did not get a quest this expansion because this was so clearly going to be so bad i think i rated this card like the top 100 list like 20 something because it's very rare a card can just split a format like that because it was either like you you play aggro or you lose and then it came back with giggling inventor and even oh. then if you if you played aggro sometimes you still lost <laughs> like yeah it it was this card is nuts this card is absolutely insane again it's a matter of how much like the after the fact ratings actually are yeah the skewing skew. yeah I'm gonna go crazy here. I'm gonna go 2.5. I don't 2. think it's 5. going to be able to recover enough from the initial ratings. I think it's lower. I think a lot of people wouldn't go back to like change their, their ratings. I think there might be some people that'd be like, oh, the Cavern's Blow is actually like a really good card, surprisingly. I'm gonna go with like 1.6, 3.0. 
Really? Okay, so I think that that gives us... We should have done this, like, earlier on. I think this tells us that people do, in fact, go back and reevaluate. Yeah, yeah. That. What's the Shaman's legendary uh, from Roscon's Kragwa? Kragwa? Kragwa the Frog. Kragwa the Frog. Six mana, four, six for Shaman. It's a legendary battle cry. Return all spells you played last turn to your hand. It's a beast. Adding cards to hand, like recursive value like this, as well as shuffling into deck, which also tends to be recursive value, is overrated usually. It's tough because I do think people really like value in guiding their spells they, back. And the dream of this card is so high. The dream is insane for this card. All right, I'll, I'll go with like 3.7. I think that's pretty close to the reality. I'm going to go a little bit lower. I think it's a 3.3. Four point oh. Jeez. You nailed it with the value consideration. Yeah, it's time. All right, what's next? Let's go Arch Villain Reform. Arch Villain Reform. Haunt Battlecry replace your hand in deck with legendary minions. So I also gotta make this very clear because I think this is very important. This expansion had more of an impact, or people probably thought it was gonna have way more of an impact, especially because Rostikon's Rumble was the previous expansion. I really think people didn't think this was gonna be good, and it's funny because this card was in the finals of the world championships that year. So the greatest, greatest singular game greatest game of Hearthstone ever yeah. played. And it happened to be like the deciding match of a world championship as well. I don't know. I think this oh, well, you're going first, but this is a, I think this one is probably reviewed lower, but it's it, it, again, so very flashy effect here. Very flashy right. effect. I think that the, the value po potential of it is going to skew people yes. higher than like yeah. what most I think Hearthstone top decks is going to be higher than what most content creators rated it. I think I'm going to go like uh, 3.5. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to risk it. I'll go like 3.9. What did you guess? Uh, 3.5. I guess 3.9 is 3.7. That's right in the middle. That's right in the middle. That's literally right in the middle. Fuck. All right. <laughs> okay, That's I guess a wash. It's a wash. Okay, okay, we'll move on. We'll move on. All right. Uh, Mockbot's yelling at me to do this. So I'll do a quarter creeper. Oh, yeah. I've been getting this a lot too, but I, I think this is going to have the caverns below effect. Yeah, it's I think, Shut the fuck up! I think I wrote an article for Hearthstone Top Decks. Oh no! At, after uh, after the fact, talking about the like why everybody missed so hard on this card. Seven mana, five five at the time. Quarter Creeper, neutral, cost one less. Whenever a minion dies, while well, this is in your hand, and it's a beast. Uh, this card is probably the lowest rated card for how impactful it ended up being. On top of that. No one really realized the synergy between that and patches, because if every deck is running patches, you might as well just fucking play this card and that ended up being really, really good. I think it was just flat out the biggest, like, widespread miss. Uh, if I'm going first, caught, I don't know. I'll go like 2.3. Okay, I'm, I'm actually going to go a little bit higher here. My rationale is that a lot of why this was, this wasn't necessarily rated lowly as it was overlooked. This was like the peak Facebook okay. neutral card dump. So I think that a lot of people wouldn't have even have rated it. I'm going to go with like a 3.3. 3.4. Almost on the dot. I Almost think a lot of people dot. scammed their ratings on this one is really what it comes down to. <laughs> Your turn. Uh, Archbishop Benedictus. 7 mana 4 6 Archbishop Benedictus Battle Cry Shuffle. A copy of your opponent's deck into your deck. Now, this is Frozen Throne. I have no idea how priest was received during this i do think that this card was probably received pretty well though right rar and you can copy your opponent's jade idol and jade idol is the strongest card in oh all you're so right yeah, does that really influence it that much it probably does there's a this is a this is another really tough one so i talked a little bit uh, earlier multiple times in fact about how shuffling was constantly overrated so i think that's going to apply to this for sure yeah i'm gonna go with like a 4.2 I think this this is a big value no fatigue blocker. Way. I think it's going to just be ab absolutely overrated. No, man, 4.2 is so high. I'll, I'll go with like 3.6. 3.5. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, okay. Thank God. Thank God. Okay. Well, at least there's some sanity <laughs> returning to the, uh, to the world. Woo! Oh, my God. Okay. If I win this next one, it's over. Let's do uh, Psychic Scream. I actually really like that one. Seven mana priest spell, shuffle all minions into your opponent's deck. This card was very good. Arguably like the best removal priest has ever received. Like this card's fucked. Not only was it really good removal, but it delays your opponent's game plan quite a bit. Of course, there's that fatigue element that people might consider. People probably underestimated it because they didn't want to give opponents cards, right? The, it's the shuffle effect, but in reverse this time. So I think it's going to cause people to underestimate it. There is no way, like, it's just so fucking good. It's just like, even looking at it now, I'd be like, yeah, I want to play that card. Like, that's nuts. Yeah, 
It, it is. It is. Yeah, it ad, it would absolutely be played in modern priest decks. Are, it, yeah. Yeah, it would be. No it hesitation. Would be. I'm gonna go pretty high here. I'm gonna go like four point five. I think that's probably a good rating. I'm gonna go like I don't have room to go above that. I don't think it's above that. I think it's four point two. Four point three. No. <laughs> I told oh you. Oh my god! It's fourteen to ten, by the way. So you're you're close. Okay. What do you got? Here we go. This is a this is a good one. Rule Dinomancer. I don't know if you know this, Rarin, but I, you are I the, am in fact the greatest Dinomancer. You are the greatest Dinomancer. Uh, this card was six mana at its release, I believe. Not a five five. Yes. Or not five mana, sorry. Uh, six mana five five cool Dinomancer for Warlock Death Battle Summon a random minion you discard this game. We have to make sure this is very clear. This is from Angoro. And reminder, people thought that Lakari Sacrifice was going to be good. There's no way people thought that the Cruel Dynomancer like synergy was going to be good. Like where it just summons itself every single game. There's no, no. way people were thinking that. Here's the thing. People hate losing cards. The potential to get it back feels like undoing the part of discard effects that they hate. That's right? really interesting thought. That's a, I didn't even consider that. I think it's probably pretty low. All that aside, I think some of the because it was a, objectively just like a bad card, right? Like yeah. we can all agree that. Um, so I think like a I think a two point four. I was gonna go around like two point eight. I think that's where I'm gonna go. So I went two point four. You went yeah. two point eight. All right, let's see. Four point two. What? That's the sex number. My only logic for this is that people legitimately thought that this card was gonna be played with the quest yeah like that's the that, only that logic i have like there's there's no way people saw this and was like yeah this card's gonna be fucking broke 4.2 bro like take this in for a second this is rated higher than death stalker rex art like there's there's no fucking way at six mana you're like yeah this is better anyways unfortunately for you raffle that means i do win because I, I picked higher than yours fortunately for me that means i'm free of this absolute madness <laughs> this has done irreparable harm to like my understanding of Hearthstone as a game, as well as my respect for the Hearthstone community. It like, is. What, is, what has tough. happened here? Chat, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Raffle, thanks for coming. I hope this was fun. Um, it was fun. I would actually do this again. This was actually really enjoyable. This is kind of fun. I would think that we should get a third person for this next time, though.